Welcome friends, so I'm going to show you to find the tangent of pi over 12 here. Okay, so it's not obvious, but we're going to have tangent of the following first. You can write the pi there as 4 minus 3 pi this way. In other words, to use a formula, a famous one, you need to break this up into something like this. Okay, this is a way to think about it, because then what you have is that this is equivalent to writing the following. 4 pi over 12, and then minus... 3 pi over 12, you see? You need to break it up into angles. Then you can reduce so it's tangent, and then from this one, divide 4 away, you're going to have pi over 3, and then divide the 3 away from the next one, so it's going to be pi over 4, you see? So this is one way to think about it. Now we can apply this formula that tells you that this is equivalent to writing the tangent of the pi over 3, minus the tangent of the pi over 4. Why would you want to use those angles? Because each of these angles can be found easily from the unit circle, that's why. Okay? And then the bottom is going to be 1 plus tangent of pi over 3, and then the tangent of pi over 4. Again, each of those quantities from the unit circle can be found very easily. So the tangent of pi over 3. You look at the unit circle, and it's going to give you a value that says it's the root of 3 over 2, Let's write it this way. It's the root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 over 2. Okay, minus the tangent of pi over 4 from the unit circle. You find it to be 1 quickly. Now in the bottom, you're going to have 1 plus tangent of pi over 3. Again, that would be the root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, and you multiply by tangent of pi over 4, which is 1. Now you just have to clean up this gnarly looking fraction. First of all, let's just work on the root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. So it would be like this, in other words root of 3 divided by 2, and then you take the 1 half in the bottom, and you do keep change flip, so the 1 half becomes 2 over 1 this way, correct? So minus 1, and the same thing in the bottom now. You're going to have 1 plus, so you've got this fraction, the root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half times the 1. The 1 is irrelevant, goes away, but then you have this fraction, so that again would be the root of 3 over 2, but I keep change flip, because you're dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by 2 over 1. Then you work on this, so it's going to be here, the root of 3 over 2 times the 2 over 1. Well, the nice thing is that uh, this will cancel with this, and the same thing over here, right? This will cancel with this. So for that reason, the only thing left over there in the numerator would be the root of 3 over 1, which is the root of 3 minus 1. And in the bottom, you would just have 1 plus the root of 3 this way. And this is a form of the answer. It's often not the one shown. It's greatly simplified, so what you can do is just write the root of 3 minus 1 over 1 plus the root of 3, and you can multiply by, and in the bottom, that 1 plus the root of 3, I'm going to form the conjugate, which is 1 minus the root of 3, and the same thing in the bottom, 1 minus the root of 3. So 1 minus the root of 3 is the conjugate of 1 plus the root of 3 in the denominator there. Okay, then you will go through that, so... In the top, you have to FOIL, so it's going to be the root of 3 times 1, which is the root of 3. The root of 3 times the root of 3 negative, that's going to give you just negative 3. Negative 1 times 1 is minus 1, and then negative 1 times negative root 3 is going to give you a positive root 3, this way, you see? All right, that's done. So then x in the bottom, you're going to have 1 times 1, which is 1. 1 times negative root 3, which is minus root 3. Positive root 3 times 1, I'm just doing FOIL here. So the positive root 3. And then the root 3 times the negative root 3 is going to give you 3. Negative this way in the bottom, okay? The roots cancel off. Then you simplify this again, gnarly looking expression. So in the numerator, you're going to have 2 root 3 minus 4. In the bottom, the two roots cancel because they're opposites. So you just have 1 minus, minus 3 left over, you see? Okay, next one. So from the numerator, from the numerator each term factor are 2 out. That's going to leave you with the root of 3 minus 2. And in the bottom, 1 minus 3 is going to give you a negative 2. So now 2 divided by negative 2 is going to be a negative 1. Root 3 minus 2. And by convention, we distribute that negative 1 back across the term. So it's going to be, and then you flip them. So at first, in other words, you would have negative root 3 plus 2. But you usually put the positive first. Right? So you're going to have, in other words, a 2 minus root 3. And that's the answer right here, simplified, down to its simplest level. Here's all the work from top to bottom so you can trace it. Please see if I like it, it's all chilled.